What's up everyone, this is Donnie aka Elevated with another video on behalf of Dota Alchemy and this one is going to be a quick guide on how to play Treant Protector in the current meta. Treant is currently my favorite hero to play as a position 5 support, hashtag team trees, shout out to Mr. Beast and planting all those trees around the world. But that's not why we're playing Treant, we're playing Treant because we want the other kind of green, we want that MMR. And currently for me, Treant is the most fun and the most versatile hero to play as a position 5, which means that he fits into a lot of different scenarios and can still have impact positively in those games, which is what you want as a support because you can't really control what your teammates are going to do. Sometimes your carries are just going to AFK farm for 35 minutes, and Treant still thrives in those types of games as well. So let's see if we can convert you to being part of Team Trees, and let's get into the guide. Like most heroes in Dota, there are a few pretty hard counters to Treant Protector that you want to try to avoid by banning if possible. Zeus gives global invisible reveal and can be very difficult to push into as the game goes along, and Treant is generally not thought of as a very good pushing hero or even helping his team go high ground, so I don't like that matchup at all. But I think Slardar is probably the hardest counter to Treant because in addition to providing the counter to his invisibility, he is one of the only heroes in the game that will actively trade with Treant Protector in the lane. And since Treant Protector revolves around being very aggressive in the lane, having somebody who can out-trade you is really bad. There are a few other mild counters to the hero, such as Phoenix, Keeper of the Light, and Timbersaw, mostly because they destroy trees, which makes it hard to play the hero. But as a 5-roll picking first, you kind of have to expect to get somewhat countered in most games. The nice thing is that many of the meta heroes right now are pretty heavily countered by Treant Protector, and so people are going to be drafting them into you regardless, such as Void, Ember Spirit, and Marana, who are all countered thanks to Treant's super strong root abilities. The laning stage is very important for Treant Protector because he is a momentum-based hero, despite his abysmally slow movement speed. The first thing that you need to determine in the lane is whether you can be aggressive or must play defensively, and in most scenarios you can play aggressively thanks to Treant's monster base damage and his ability to hit and run with nature's guise. Start the game by buying a ward, a sentry, the courier, two tangos, and I like to buy a smoke of deceit, but you can also save this gold for faster boots or buy a mango if you feel like you need it, and head to the lane after pooling tangos and a ward to the necessary parties. You can get to lane just a little bit faster by walking to the closest trees as soon as you spawn and using nature's guys to get a bit of movement speed boost and doing this continually until you actually get to where you need to go. Once you're in the lane, you basically just want to abuse Treant's ability to be elusive, hiding in the trees, popping out, punching the offlane hero with nature's guys' root, doing a ton of damage to him, and then hiding back in the trees again with these sort of guerrilla warfare tactics. Better players will bring a sentry to the lane to counter you, but you can usually figure out where it is quickly and use your own superior tree walking mobility to counter ward it. If you're playing against an invis hero like Sand King, you may need to actually revise your starting items and bring two or even more sentries to the lane to ensure that you have control of the vision. And you can experiment by placing your sentries in hard to reach locations in the side trees, some of which only you can get to because of your tree walking ability. A big part of winning the lane is attacking from all sorts of different angles to keep the offlane heroes scared of your presence and unsure of which side to stand on. Again, better players will try to counter you by using a calling blade to cut all of the trees near the lane, but this is a time consuming and annoying process that distracts them from getting last hits and often takes so long that you can get off several hits on them before they nullify your aggressive positioning. If the enemies are doing a good job of countering you, however, simply default to standard support play and side pull the lane when necessary while using your huge base damage to deny creeps when you can. A quick side note before we move on from the laning stage, remember that smoke of deceit we bought? Because the creep waves meet so close to your safe lane tower, you often do not need to be there to help your carry for the first couple of waves. And I like to smoke myself during this time, shortly after securing the bounty runes, and walk to the med lane, and nature's guys myself in between the enemy tier 1 and tier 2 towers. Treant is one of the only heroes in the game that can one-shot the walking courier, and honestly this probably works in about 70-80% to 80 of my games which can be hugely beneficial to your mid player's game as well. Just be sure that you're not abandoning a lane where you have to be there at level one or your carry will get nothing. Or if you're trying to do this against a mid that doesn't generally send out regen until much later, like an invoker who has Quas or a dragon knight who has dragon's blood. 
Let's quickly cover the skill build. Every game you will start with nature's guys at level one and in aggressive lanes, you will probably go for a two, one, zero build in your first three points. If your lane or another is being pressured heavily, then you can opt for an early point in living armor instead of leech seed. But the second point in nature's guys is super valuable because it increases the route to a full one second and adds an additional 50 damage to your attack. From there, you will want to max out living armor and then nature's guys and of course taking overgrowth whenever possible. Living Armor is one of the most underrated and snowball -y abilities in the game, and at max level it essentially functions like a TA's refraction during the early to mid game because hero damage is fairly low and the damage block is so high, so you should be constantly looking to turn fights and save teammates anywhere on the map since you can use it globally, which is totally absurd. Moving on from the laning stage, if you were able to play a successful early game, you probably helped secure a good farm for your carry and might have even gotten some snowballing kills. Boots are extremely important on this hero and I almost always buy them with my first 500 gold since the faster your movement speed the more you can abuse nature's guys to get to places you shouldn't be. Especially once you have a couple levels in nature's guys and potentially tranquil boots, you can pretty much walk from one grouping of trees to another and even go up steps without breaking your invisibility. And this is probably one of the most important skills to master on tree and protector which can require a bit of experimenting and even some feeding to figure out where you can and cannot walk without being discovered. Once the lanes break down, there are two main scenarios that play out. A, you're ahead and can play aggressively, or B, you're behind and need to keep your team alive and safe. In scenario A, you should be using your stealthy nature to plant very aggressive vision on the enemy shrines, behind towers and get your team to start pressuring objectives. You can usually find a position in trees behind a tower where enemies might TP into to defend and give your team an overwhelming vision advantage. Try to find the most aggressive position you can to keep the other team guessing, catch stragglers or early defenders, and cut off any retreat with a well-timed overgrowth or nature's guise route. In scenario B, you will often find the map a bit claustrophobic, but can usually find at least one lane to safely ward up and extend your map control in through hiding in the trees. You will have to function as somewhat of a moving ward, looking for any pickoffs or even simply sitting behind a farming core or in front of them, ready to overgrow the gank so you can both escape. Very rarely should you ever be showing in a lane for more than a few seconds, though sometimes you can also take the dead lane and try to snipe a few last hits while keeping your eyes peeled on the minimap to living armor your teammates who are on the other side. When it comes to items, the paths are numerous and depend on your role in the game. So defining your role is probably the most important part of playing Treant because you usually get so little farm and need to spend so much of it on wards that you need to be very, very efficient in figuring out what the exact right item is for the game. Treant is surprisingly versatile though and can function as an initiator, a split pusher, a team fighter, and a D pusher. In most games, you will want to be snowballing, however, which means that you should focus on small team-oriented items like Tranquil Boots, Vlads, Buckler, Medallion, Force Staff, and most of your impact will come from providing aggressive vision, setting up kills with one of your roots. In some games, you will find that you need to be a hard initiator because you just don't have something like an axe or any of these other jumping heroes. And in these types of scenarios, skipping the Tranquil Boots and going Brown Boots and then directly for a Blink Dagger or early Force Staff is necessary. With this kind of build, you definitely want to be pairing it with something that has big team fights such as a Kunkka, a Phoenix, Keeper of the Light, or Crystal Maiden that can take advantage of your route. The ideal Treant Protector game involves a lot of fighting, but sometimes you'll find yourself in one of those old fashioned grind fests, and that's why I love picking Treant so much right now. Unlike a lot of other popular fives like Undying and Ogre, who can feel extremely useless when their team is playing super passively or being uncoordinated or just simply feeding, if I do ever end up with a Naga or an Anti-Mage on my team, or we're playing against a Tinker, Zeus, Sniper, or God forbid a Techies, I will sometimes just go Brown Boots, Aghanim Scepter, and that's going to sound like such a meme, but even the most uncoordinated team can win a game of Dota where they have a full map hack, and considering that there is a limit on sentries, Eyes in the Forest is really just absurdly high value, especially against one of these really annoying split pushing heroes like a Tinker or an Ember Spirit, or like I said, a Techies who you wanna keep track of at all times. Two final items that I wanna to touch on before we finish this guide up are Gem of True Sight and Meteor Hammer. Now, Treant is potentially the best gem carrier in the game because he's so hard to keep track of and because people are trying to sentry counter you all the time, you can spot the sentries out by walking in the trees and allowing your creeps to walk 
lock up and then quelling blade the sentry without ever having to reveal yourself to deward it. Speaking of which, quelling blade plus tree and protector is a must because you can deward without breaking nature's guise. And finally, let's talk about Meme Hammer. This item used to be the most important item to buy on Treant, but I think it's now a huge trap because it was super popular when Treant was played as a four or a three that was meant to just sit in a lane and keep it pushed in indefinitely. However, playing this split pushy style is almost always bad as a five roll, and you're almost always better off just building an Agonims because you're almost all the way there with the cost of a Meteor Hammer and if you are finding yourself able to just sit in the lane because your teammates are jungling and doing nothing then getting an Ags will be much higher impact later on in the game. So that's about it for this guide everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below and I was kind of memeing at the beginning talking about Team Trees and Mr. Beast but let's be honest our planet needs some more trees. So I hope that I've converted some of you to team trees. And I did tweet at Mr. Beast asking him how many more trees he would donate if I were to play tree and protector only on stream for 48 straight hours. So we'll see if he responds, but hopefully I've planted some trees in your brains that will grow into a nice plus 25 MMR in your pubs. Good luck and have fun and we'll see you next time.